part, we're looking at a problem. And that could be a problem as a consumer or a problem in a business and you need to contact another business. So consumer to business and business to business when you have a problem, that's called a complaint letter or a claim letter. So let's look at how a claim letter or this complaint situation works. What's this all about? Well, first of all, we need to think very clearly. What is it that happened that's going to make you complain? You probably should write things down to be clear before you write your letter. When we talk about complaining, it doesn't just mean you don't feel good. It means something actually went wrong. So you bought a product and it's broken, doesn't function right, doesn't do what it's supposed to do. Or if you're a business buying from another business, the delivery was past its date of expiration, or maybe the shipping date was late, or maybe the port of arrival was wrong or something was wrong in the banking arrangement. There are many things that can go wrong, but whatever they are, they're probably gonna be a little bit complicated. So you really need to sit down, think about it, and get it clear what happened and what the problem actually is. The next step is to think, what do you want to happen? It's not enough just to say, I complain. In fact, that's not really useful at all. You need to say, what do you want? to happen to solve this problem. So do you want a replacement? Do you need a refund? Do you need something to happen next time? And it needs to be changed different from the last time. So you need to make these two things clear. What is the situation that happened? And what is it you want to happen that will solve that problem? A very interesting idea in business is that actually when something goes wrong, it's a chance, an opportunity for your company to make better relations with another company or you as a customer to get better relations with the company you buy from. It may be that the company wants to help you solve this problem and once you let them know they can solve it and you'll have a better feeling and you'll have a better relationship. So in business this is often the case. Now. It's not the case if you just get angry and upset and you're not very clear headed. So this letter is certainly about staying focused and clear. This letter will typically have three paragraphs and we're going to emphasize a few points, which is the history of the problem. That is what's hap when did it happen? What happened? And then what's happening now, like right now, because what happened before is already history, right? So what's happened just now or recently? And what is it you want to happen? That's basically how we break it up into these parts. Whatever you do, you don't include your feelings or anger or any kind of emotions because it's not going to help the situation at all. So this letter should be very logical. When you send this letter of complaint or a claim letter, you need to be very clear on what you want to happen. You also need to be clear on exactly what happened so they can track the problem down. So for example, is there a product number? Is there a account number, a receipt number, an order number? You need to say all of these things. I've had experiences in companies where customers complain and they said something's wrong, it's not working and I have no idea. What product are they talking about? What order are they talking about? Are they even a customer of my company? I don't know. So you need to give all that information clearly. All right, let's look at the complaint letter. It has three paragraphs and let's first look at the first paragraph. The first paragraph should explain what the problem is, exactly how it happened. So it's kind of like in the past already. So you probably want to be clear about a couple of things. One thing is the date. What was the date that you bought it on? And what was the date that it went wrong on? And what was that exact situation? So here we have a customer, a consumer complaining about, he bought a computer on July 5th and he had a problem when he tried to turn it on. He took the computer back to the dealer where I bought it and here's the name of where he bought it. So there's another good thing and a location. So we've got a date and a name of a location and a company or a supplier and the location there. They told me the power system was broken and it would have to be repaired at no charge. 
because the machine was still covered by the warranty. After the repairs were finished, one week later, I took the computer home and used it. And after two days, the same problem occurred. This time when I took it back to the store, I was told I would have to pay for the repairs. So in this example, this consumer example, he's complaining to the computer manufacturer saying, I bought it from one of your suppliers. This is the date I bought it. This is the location I bought it. This is the problem that happened. And then it happened again and now they want me to pay. So now I send you this letter of complaint. Let's look at a business to business situation. Now business to business situation of course can be much bigger, but we also should be careful to be very clear. So here we have our last order of apples. So this is what we ordered from your company, order number, and that's very good, order number right there. And that order number was placed on May 1. So we, right there, perfect. We have a date and we have an order number, that's great. Arrived yesterday, May 10. So this is what happened, this is the problems coming. 20 of the crates, 20 of the crates fully satisfied our needs, but five, five of the crates were seriously damaged in transit. The apples in the five crates were not fit for sale. Not fit for sale. So in these two examples, paragraph one is telling what happened, and it's already in the past. And they're very clear, no emotion, just step by step. Give me a date, give me a location, give me an order number, tell me exactly what happened. The business to business one's a great example. Five crates were a problem. The other crates were okay and here are the dates. That's a great example. Now, paragraph two. In paragraph two, we're gonna go ahead and tell the situation right now because paragraph one is what already happened. That may have happened a week ago, a month ago, or a year ago, or even longer ago. So now we're gonna tell now. What did you do recently to try to solve this problem or what made the problem develop recently? You don't want to repeat the problem again, but you want to tell just recently what's been done. And again, these should be very clear facts. So let's look at some examples here. The consumer example is the first one, consumer to business. For one week, the computer has been at the store. The store manager cannot be reached because the computer has already been repaired. The workers will not return it until I have paid. So we learned that there was a problem with this computer when he bought it. He took it back for repair, then he took it back for repair a second time, and now it's stuck at the shop. So he's telling the company. Otherwise, they won't know what's happened. They're gonna think, is the computer in your house? Is the computer somewhere? They don't know. So he's making it clear this is what happened recently. Let's look at the B2B, the business to business example. The five crates of damaged apples had to be disposed of. That means thrown into the trash. The rest of the shipment was accepted and sold with no problem. So again, very clear, we had to get rid of it and that is the situation now. That is the situation now. Very clear, very short, very concise, right to the point. Right